Where is it? You say, the Greek, the Greek and the Hebrew. Okay, I got two. Which one? 27 editions here and quite a few editions over here. Which one's perfect? Which one is God's preserved word? Well, you say, well, all the versions, all of them are preserved. They contradict each other. These don't say what the King James says. God's word is preserved. It's perfect for us today. Where is it? Show me a copy. But he says here, and I love this, uh, besides we should all learn Greek and Hebrew, its original form. <laughs> so, in other words, I can't understand this horrible archaic English, but I can understand Greek. Oh, this is what we should learn right here. This is so much easier to understand and to read than is thee, thou, thy, beholdeth. You see? The sick mindset. Okay? On to the second part. Contemporary Christian music. Contemporary and traditional music are not only a gift from God's own hands, but is very biblical. Traditional music proves God's sovereignty and contemporary music proves God's joy and life. We all praise God in many ways and all these various ways are pleasing to Him. Really? Okay. And then he gives a bunch of scripture quotations there and he says about dancing and everything else. You know, all of it's Old Testament, of course, obviously. But he says, to say any godly and spiritual music is wrong, not only is it an opinion, but also a sin. Also, now I'm a sinner too, apparently. Now I'm sinning because I rip on modern rock music that's called Christian. Nowhere in God's Word does it mention that any music that brings praise to Him is wrong. Well, yeah, of course. Of course. Any music that brings true praise to God, of course it's not wrong. But this modern Christian movement of doing worldly things and saying, Oh, we're doing this for the Lord. This is for the Lord. You see, that doesn't bring honor to the Lord. You're a compromiser. You are a worldly compromiser. And you defend worldly music because it appeals to your flesh. That's the issue here. And you say, well, I feel good about it, and I've prayed about it. Doesn't matter what the Bible says. Doesn't matter what science says. And I'm going to talk about that in just a minute here. Oh, no, that doesn't matter. That's a non-issue to me. You see, because... I have books like this ridiculous book right here, Rick Warren's 40 Days of Purpose, and on page 65, excuse me, 65, he says, God loves all kinds of music because he invented it all, fast and slow, loud and soft, old and new. You probably don't like it all, but God does. Written by a Council on Foreign Relations member, globalist, okay? And I don't believe for one second that this man saved, that Rick Warren is saved. He is a minister of Satan. Okay? But see, that's the kind of junk that modern Christians will listen to. Let me finish here. He says, uh, When God pours out His Spirit on us, who are we to deny it anyway? That is wrong. Yeah. Well, you see... Standard operating procedure for modern, quote-unquote, Christianity is, first, you get rid of the Bible. There is no perfect Bible. They have contradictions. So who's to really say what's right and wrong? And then you come in and say, if it feels good, do it. My conscience doesn't convict me. I feel I'm right. It feels right. See? That's the way this thing works. Hey, I came out of the modern Christian church. I know what I'm talking about. I used to be like you are right now, Kevin. I used an NIV for 15 years. I went to the rock concerts. I went to secular and Christian rock concerts, and it was the same atmosphere. Exactly. Identical. Same atmosphere. Same hand gestures, same spirit, same everything. Anyhow, he continues on here. And he says about, you know, we shouldn't be divided and everything else. And it says here, we need to put our petty differences and opinions aside and fight the good fight of faith. Also, if we argue over such ignorant matters, unbelievers will notice. Such ignorant matters? 
buddy, you need to study some church history. And you need to see that the Roman Catholic Church that puts out this garbage right here, they shed the blood of martyrs and saints of Jesus Christ. Read Revelation 17 sometime and 18 to see what God's going to do to the Roman Catholic Church someday. Not too far off either, by the way. It's not a petty difference. It's not an ignorant matters. And by the way, I'm not the one who's ignorant. Okay, I have studied, I have read many, many books, spent years in researching the Bible version issue and the contemporary Christian issue, con contemporary Christian music issue. I've spent years on it. I'm not the one who writes letters and says, don't send me any information. I'm not going to give you my address so you can't rebut this thing. Okay, I'm not the ignorant one. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 13, He that answereth the matter before he heareth it, it is folly and shame unto him, not me. Okay? We provide information. We have it in our track pack that we give out. Okay? Tracks. All free. You write our ministry, we will send you lots of tracks on the Bible version issue to clear up any kind of questions you might have. Okay? We have books we give out for free. I just sent, I think probably just about over $100 worth of books to an elderly man out in Washington State. We do it all the time. Tracks, books, excellent books, Sabotage by Jack Chick. There are so many websites that you can look this stuff up. As far as contemporary music is concerned, again, we have lots of tracks on this thing. Okay? Dr. Frank Garlick. Garlock, I guess is, yeah, I said that wrong. Garlock. Dr. Frank Garlock. I mean, this guy's a professional musician. Professor on the, on the uh, study of music. I mean, phenomenal. The science behind why rock music is bad for your health and, in fact, not of the Lord. And, I mean, study. Where did rock music come from? It came from the occult. It came from Satanism, from voodoo, and from the Druids. Okay, that's who it can be traced back to. Do a little bit of research sometime. Don't be ignorant, okay, or judgmental. Jeff Godwin's books. Again, excellent information proving that this modern, quote-unquote, contemporary Christian music, it's not of the Lord, and it's not pleasing to the Lord, and you cannot praise God with it. And if that's not, and, and by the way, if we drop the standard of God's Word, and we say, if it feels good, do it. And if you pray about it and you don't really get a, a definite no, you know, in your mind, well, then we can do it. Well, then why don't we bring in Christian strippers? Hey, we could bring lots of people into the churches, couldn't we? Yeah, uh-huh. See, what it, it would appeal to the flesh. And that's what this modern music does. All right? So that's, I just want to read two more verses to kind of close this thing up here. Back to 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3 and 4. If you're a Bible believer, you're probably very familiar with these verses. It says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Kevin, if you watch this, I pray that you will study and that you won't be ignorant and you won't judge a ministry like Bible Believers Fellowship. Okay? That's it. Thank you.